January 1933, 14 years after the defeat of Germany in the First World War, Adolf Hitler came to power. In violation of the Versailles Peace Treaty, Germany at once began rearming. In March 1936, in violation of the treaty, Germany reoccupied the Rhineland. In March 1938, in violation of the treaty, Germany absorbed Austria. In September 1938, with the Munich Pact, England and France yielded to Germany large areas of Czechoslovakia under Adolf Hitler's threat of war. With this pact, Germany guaranteed peace in Europe and the independence of the rest of Czechoslovakia. In March 1939, Germany violated the pact and occupied the rest of Czechoslovakia. Germany was also threatening Poland. And now, on March 31st, 1939, the British government, at last resolving to halt Hitler's Germany, gives Poland an unconditional guarantee of military assistance. This guarantee will lead to the outbreak of the Second World War. Colonel General Walter von Brockitsch, Commander-in-Chief of the German Army. General Franz Halder, Chief of Staff. Lieutenant General Alfred Jodl, Operations Chief of the OKW, Hitler's Supreme Headquarters Command. Colonel General William Keitel, Chief of the OKW. Admiral Erich Reder, Commander-in-Chief of the German Navy. Summoned by the Führer, these officers are here for an urgent meeting on the British military guarantee. You have heard Ribbentrop's news? Yes, my Führer. My will is fixed and unshakable. You will proceed with the planning for Case White. Mein Führer, the starting date? September 1st. Does the Führer's decision uh, present uh, problems for the military? Joachim von Ribbentrop, Does Hitler's foreign minister. Vain and incompetent, he has succeeded in earning the dislike of almost everyone in the German government. My Luftwaffe will be ready September 1st, mein Führer. If necessary, even sooner. Field Marshal Hermann Goering, commander of the powerful German Air Force, My in the Third Reich, second I only either. to the Führer. With all due respect to the Field Marshal, mein Führer, you give us only five months to prepare for general war. It would require at least a year. We do not have a year. It is my belief that if the attack on Poland is started with sudden heavy blows that gain rapid success, general war will be avoided. But if England and France do march, I'll cook them a stew. They will choke on.
exist. What exists, Madeline? All this Hitler business. I mean, I read about it in the papers, but, well, it seems too ridiculous and crazy to be real. It's real, all right. Commander Victor Henry, United States Navy. State room 63A deck. General von Bowen. Oh, sehr wohl, Herr General. Eine Ehre, Sie wieder an Bord zu haben, Herr General. Dieselbe Kabine. Danke. Wer war der Mann? Ein amerikanischer Marineoffizier, Herr General. So habe ich gehört. Sein Auftrag. Wissen Sie? Äh, Marine Attaché, amerikanische Botschaft Berlin, Herr General. Ich empfehle Kapitän Schwenk, ihn an seinem Tisch zu platzieren. Zu Befehl, Herr General. I can't believe it. We're actually going. Madge Tauber was in Berlin for the Olympics. She keeps saying how wonderful it still is and how cheap. She says we'll just lust. Oh, here it is, Pug. Surprise! Warren! Oh! <laughs> oh. oh. Hey, Kitty! <laughs> oh. What the devil? Why aren't you in flight school? I just blew in. Are you kidding? You think I would have missed this? I used to ride up from Pensacola in a PBY. Oh, Bug, isn't it a wonderful surprise? Saturday night in New York? Watch out all you big city girls. Warren Henry's in town. Uh -huh. Oh, what do you say we get this party underway? Huh? Has Byron heard about the big move? We haven't heard from your brother for months. Oh, well, the last letter we got, he quit his studies in Florence, and he's vagabonding around Europe somewhere. Got bored with the fine arts. Oh, now, Pug, don't carry on so. Byron's a strange fish, but there's a lot of brains underneath. I know. That's the problem. Well, here's to the new tour of duty. Yes, and good luck in Berlin. Cheers. <laughs> I got a Navy car. Can I drive you someplace? My date's not till 5 o'clock. You can take me to the Rockefeller Center, the National Broadcasting Company. What for? I'm gonna look for a job. <laughs> Dan know about this? Are you crazy? Besides, it's just for the summer. Away. Huh? I've been smoking for years. Oh. adventurous pug sailing on a German ship these days. I wonder if there are any Nazis right here at this bar. Um, let's go out on the deck and take a look at the Statue of Liberty. No, sir. I want another drink. I've seen the Statue of Liberty. Look, 
As long as we're aboard this ship, we have to assume that everything we say is being recorded. That means at the bar, at the table, in our stateroom. That ever occurred to you? Well, yes, sort of, but in a stateroom, too? Always? You mean... Oh, you don't mean day and night, Pog, really? If they didn't, they'd be sloppy. The Germans are not a sloppy people. Well, then, mister, keep your distance on this boat. That's all I can say. And I intend to spend the entire trip chastely brushing up my German. It's going to be the same in Berlin. Honestly. Oh, hell. It really doesn't make much difference anyway, does it? Can I have my other drink now? Jastro, hop in. This is Leslie Sloat. Columbia 38, is it? Yes, sir. Welcome to Siena. Well, here's to Byron Henry, notorious hater of the Italian Renaissance. <laughs> what did you hear this, sir? Well, my old friend Cesare Milano at Columbia. He mentioned it in passing in a letter he wrote to me about you. Well, I guess I have no choice but to drink. What have you got against the Italian Renaissance, Byron? I suppose I just had too much of it. Started out fascinated, and I ended up just snowed under and bored. I think it's the mixture of paganism and Christianity. It sort of sticks in my craw. You ask what I had against the Italian Renaissance. I told you. Now, don't fold up on us, Byron. Other people have taken your position. Good name for it is uh, Protestantism. 
Mr. Byron, I understand your father is a naval officer? Yes, sir. He's in Washington in war plans. War plans? Gracious. Is that as ominous as it sounds? A.J., every country draws up theoretical war plans in peacetime. Tell me, does your father think war is imminent? He didn't mention it in his last letter. Leslie is in the Foreign Service, Byron, which makes him an expert on these matters. He thinks my uncle should go home. We've had a running argument about that now for days. Of course, he's going on to Warsaw. Well, for what it's worth, I think there's going to be a war. You do? I'd be interested to know why. I just toured Germany. Everywhere you drive, you pass army trucks full of troops and railroad cars loaded for miles with artillery and tanks. Byron, with such displays, Hitler won Austria and the Sudetenland, and he never had to fire a shot. Dr. Jastrow, when I was in Germany, I saw signs on park benches and trolley cars about the Jews, and I saw burnout synagogues. Yes. Well, I'm surprised that you speak as calmly as you do about Hitler, being Jewish, I mean. If Hitler wins out, the Jews will simply fall back to the second-class status they had for so long under the kings and the popes. And we survived 17 centuries with that. And we have quite a store of wisdom and doctrine for coping with it. Aaron, this Olympian attitude of yours completely exasperates me. That you could rely on Adolf Hitler's prudence for your safety and for Natalie's strikes me as grotesque. I think Natalie's parents would agree with me. Natalie can go home tomorrow if she wishes. But I think perhaps she finds working here in Siena as my secretary more stimulating than Miami Beach. Oh, I'm thinking of going home all right, Leslie, but not because of Hitler. There are a few things that bother me just a little bit more than Hitler at the moment. Look, we are not... I dare say. where we do most of our work. It's quite a library. Oh, a fair collection on early Christianity. Now, Baron, I understand you took a naval reserve course and obtained a commission. Is that where your interests lie? No, sir. Uh... The commission was more to please my father. Ah. Uh, I assume that when Dr. Milano suggested you visit, he mentioned that I might have something for you. Yes, he did. My next work is called The Arch of Constantine. You do know who Constantine was? The uh, first Christian emperor of Rome, I believe. A plus, Baron. I need some research the Emperor's Wars. Would uh, $20 a week interest you? Well, sir, I've flunked more history courses. I see. You don't want the job. Uh, no, sir, I didn't say that. Uh, tell me, would I be living and working here in the villa? Certainly. You'd be working right here in this room. That is Natalie's desk there, and yours would be here. I think I'll try it, sir. Oh, you will. Although you say you have no aptitude. Why? Well, uh, for the money and, and of course, to be around you, sir. To be around me. Oh, to be sure. All right, Byron, why don't we give it a try?
Oh, Captain, baked Alaska. Well, we tried to make the last night of the voyage a memorable one, Mrs. Henry. And uh, it is the Fury's birthday. No, Mr. Tootsbury, there will be no war between England and Germany. Well, we're all the same stock, all North Europeans. It would be a sad thing for brothers to fall out. <laughs> Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it, Pam? Remind me to include it in my next broadcast. <laughs> Oh, nobody wants war now, anyways. Absolutely nobody. It would be so silly nowadays. Does your wife speak for the United States Navy, Commander? She speaks for Piper Heitzig, 34. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I have just had the pleasure of lecturing at your Naval War College, Commander. Really? What was your impression? Your Navy is the one fighting force in the world today which can compare professionally with the German Army. I would put in a word for the Royal Navy and the RAF. I'm afraid, sir, it is already well known that the Royal Air Force have lost air parity to the Luftwaffe. As for the Royal Navy, that is the province of Commodore Grobke and his U-boats. Not a bad Navy, but we have damn good U-boats. You had U-boats last time. <laughs> we did fine, until America came in. Were you in the Atlantic then? Destroyers. I was below. Maybe this is not the first time we meet, huh? Maybe. Poster. My dear Mrs. Henry, may I have the honor of this first dance? That is, commanding with your permission. By all means, Captain. Yeah. Tell me, General, will your Führer attack Poland? His whole brilliance lies in his bloodless victories. The Polish corridor is an idiotic anomaly. The Fuhrer will find a solution. No war over Danzig? No war. None that is that Germany will start. Well, I suppose you're on a school vacation. Yes, for quite some time. I'm 28. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were about my daughter's age. She's 19. Many people make that mistake, Commander. I suppose it's because I'm always with my father. I help him with his work. His eyes aren't very good. Well, that must be interesting. Depends on the subject matter. Nowadays, it's somewhat of a broken record. Will the little tramp go, or won't he? Energetic dancer, your wife, Commodore. Thank you. Commander Eric. Ah, gentlemen, excuse us, please. <laughs> Dead, Henry. Woman's starlish. <laughs> Almost makes one wonder how that Grumpka fellow's held up as well as he has. A great deal of sea duty, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> well, fraternizing with Jenny, were you? Strictly in the line of duty. He's invited me out to inspect the sub base at Schwinnemunde. Mm. Anyway, I doubt that Grubb is a Nazi. You do, eh? Well, as you boat fellas are all right, I suppose. As much as any Germans are. <laughs> Can we have another dance later? Of course, thank you. Right. Oh, I shall get myself a white wig and a cane. They look so shattered when I refuse. And as for that hateful conga. Oh. Fuhrer's ball. I've been covering that fellow, Henry, since the day he marched into Austria. Something right out of Plutarch, well, a zero of a man, with no schooling, of no known family. At 20, a dropped-out student, a drifter, a failure. Henry, I watched that man march in triumph through the streets of Vienna, where he had sold postcards that gone hungry. The sole heir to the combined thrones of the Habsburgs and the Hohenzollerns. The grotesque travesty is the central truth of our age. And the only reason for this damn ball. Well, you created him, you know. I beg your pardon. Fuhrer. 
You and the French, your insane Treaty of Versailles partitioned Germany, made an economic and political madhouse of Europe. You think that could last? You generated a volcanic resentment in our people. Hitler is the political eruption. Is the German army with him? He has rearmed us. He has given us back our self-esteem. And terror and concentration camps. All forms of politics are dirty, my friend. Democracies, dictatorships, variations on one theme. Please the mob. Meine Damen und Herren, ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast. A toast to Germany's great leader, Adolf Hitler, on his 50th birthday, and to his life's aim, peace. Der Führer! Der Führer! Der Führer! Good morning. Good morning. Achtung, Achtung. Wir warten etwa drei Stunden an den an den Passagieren. Wir warten wenig. Would you mind if I joined you? Oh, yes, thank you. I feel so stupid preparing to smile at 40 feet. Doesn't your father believe in before breakfast walks? Talky. He hates exercise of any kind. Besides, right now, he has a touch of gout. It's his curse. Talky? His middle name is Talcott. Ever since school, he's been talky to his friends. Guess why? Where's your wife, Commander? Also not a walker? Oh, she's busy packing. Not that she walked to the corner drugstore, she can catch a ride or hail a cab. Will you be coming back to the United States? Well, if Father gets thrown out of Berlin, which seems inevitable, I suppose we will. Why? I have a son I should like you to meet. Um, unlike his father, he's quite handsome. Oh? What does he do? Naval officer, like his father. A sailor? Never. A girl in every port. Don't you have any other sons, Commander? As a matter of fact, I do. But, uh, he'd be a bit young for you. Maybe not. I never do seem to hit it quite right. I say, Commander! Just had a word with that Grubke fella. Managed to horn in on your little trip to Schweinemunder. I hope you're not put off. Not at all. Glad to have you along. Uh. Talky, I thought you were packing. We'll be in dock any minute now. That's exactly why I'm here. I've made a muck of it. 
You know I can't handle things of that kind. <laughs> well, what are you standing there for, you lazy creature? Say au revoir to Commander Henry and go below and get my things together. Shall we see you in Berlin? Of course. I shall be pumping in for the latest military intelligence. And learning nothing, I'll be bound. I'll feed his end, Commander. Go on. Dudsbury, I have notions of matching your daughter up with a son of mine. Oh, have you? I warn you, Pamela's a handful. Why, how can you say that? I've never met a gentler or pleasanter girl. Still waters, I warn you. <laughs> See you in Berlin. I'm expecting you, General. The chief of staff is with him. You had a pleasant American journey. You feel refreshed? Yes, thank you. Good. You will take full charge of operational planning for Case White and report back Friday. Hmm? What assumptions have been made about the Soviet Union? Stalin shot most of his first-class general officers in the perch. I don't rate the Red Army very high. It can field 300 divisions. Yes, but will Stalin allow us to roll across Poland to his border unchecked? I am not an optimist about that. And what if their alliance with England goes through? That is the real nightmare. That is politics. We have our orders, and you have yours. I will report back on Friday, of course, but I can give you my estimate now. Case White will be an all-out two-front war from the outset. The fatal error of Kaiser Wilhelm. The Kaiser was not a political genius. This man, yes, he will pull off another political miracle. Good, so we plan for a miracle, eh? We plan to smash Poland in two weeks. And hold in the West. Hold in the West with what we have. That is the miracle we plan for. All previous studies inadequate. Assumptions about Soviet Union in view of the proposed Anglo-Soviet alliance are highly hazardous. We are going out on very thin ice. Door. What's the drill here? Uniforms every day? Oh, no, no. I just came from a review. You suit up only for occasions, yeah. Good. Such as this one. Hmm. You get to meet Hitler right off the bat? Yeah, just luck. It's a big crush for the Bulgarian minister. We'll just pass by and shake hands. It ought to give Mrs. Henry a thrill. Is this usual? An attaché at a head of state reception? Not very, no. 
And the queer thing is, those cards came from Wehrmacht headquarters. Compliments of a General von Roon. Aren't you going to say anything about my new outfit? I think it's just perfect. You never look better. <laughs> well, of course, it isn't my choice, but Sally Forrest says Hitler's mad about pink. Washington seems dull and tame, doesn't it? City Music Hall. Oh, Pug. Oh, look. You can see him now. Max Halder. Oh, that prison haircut, I declare. Man, the rest are all so gaudy. Der Marineattaché der Botschaft der Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika und Frau Henry. Willkommen in Deutschland. Danke, Herr Reichskanzler. Frau Henry, ich hoffe, Sie fühlen sich wohl in Berlin. Um ehrlich zu sein, Herr Reichskanzler, ich habe gerade mit der Haussuche begonnen. Sie werden keine Schwierigkeiten haben. Aber es gibt so viele herrliche Berliner Viertel. Ich bin ganz verwirrt. Colonel William Forrest und Frau Forrest. Dropping Goebbels. Would you like to meet him? Oh, please. General. Commander Henley. General von Roon. How nice to see you again. Excuse me. Well, thank you for getting us here. What do you think of the Fuhrer? Not much like the image in the New York newspapers, all horns and a tail. <laughs> no, not at all. I understand you're an excellent tennis player. Oh? Was that included in my dossier? Very little was not included. Perhaps we could have a game sometime. I'd like that. You'll never believe it. I know it was dreadful to drag you out on your lunch hour, but I was afraid somebody would snap it up. It even has a tennis court. But you don't think Hitler had anything to do with this, do you? Well, I, I mean, do you think he, he really remembered? He 
it's such a pleasure to do business with Americans. My brother has a real estate business in Chicago. That is where I learned. Someday, perhaps I will go back. And on top of everything else, there are five bedrooms upstairs and three marble baths. And where do you see the garden? Look. Uh, Is this the most beautiful drawing room you've ever seen? Look at the panel. Here. Here is the garden. And behind the house, there are tennis courts, which I'll show you in a moment. Here. This way. Now. Now. This way. Down there is the, uh, the lake. The lovely little lake. You can see. Who owns this? Ludwig Rosenthal. A uh, well-known sugar merchant. Very large firm. What's the catch? What catch? What do you mean? But why is the price so low? Well, there's this new ruling. What ruling? I'm not very clear about it. Something about uh, Jewish people owning real estate. Well, uh, does this man know that you're showing me this house at this price? Oh, naturally. When can I meet him? I have taken the liberty to ask him to come out. He should be here at any moment. Excuse me. $78 a month? It's ridiculous. Well, that's what I thought. It's a lovely house, Herr Rosenthal. Sir Liebensburdig. Thank you. Uh, we are fond of it, my wife and I. We have spent a lot of time and money on it. The truth is, Mrs. Henry and I are, uh, feel a bit awkward about leasing it. Oh. But why? You are very desirable tenants. Uh, if a lower rent would help, no, of no, course no, I would, Lord, uh... No, the rent is incredibly low. It's... Do you actually get the money? Of course. With the agent's commission deducted and certain municipal fees, I will receive every penny. Knoedler told me that some new ruling compels you to rent it. I, I, I assure you, uh, Commander Henry, that won't affect you as a tenant. But just what is this new ruling? Well, it's an emergency decree. You understand? I, I am sure eventually it will be rescinded. Meanwhile, this property can be sold at any time without my consent. However, if there is a tenant in residence with a diplomatic immunity, that cannot be done. Hence the modest rent. May I ask you a question, Herr Rosenthal? Why don't you just sell out and leave Germany? My family has a business more than 100 years old. My wife and I are born Berliners. This is home. I have lived through other bad times. I was shot through a lung in Belgium in 1914. Man goes through a lot in his lifetime. Well, Mrs. Henry loves the house, but uh, we just uh, hate to take advantage of someone else's misfortune. You'll be doing just the opposite. You know that now. I wish we hadn't taken it. You do? Truly? Really struck me before. Never seemed to really be happening. That fine man, imagine running out this beautiful home for pittance in order to keep it from being sold over his head to some fat Nazi, no doubt, lying in wait to pick it up cheap. What well, do you want me to call it off? He really wants us in, you know. Oh, I know he does. That's what's so scary. I'm going to be happy in this house. 
or in this country. It's such a barn, I'll need a troop of servants. Oh, we'll get them. No problem. They're all Gestapo spies, you know, every last one of them. Fuck. Oh, I wish you'd been ordered to a battleship. So do I, honey. So do I. Another head. Was I staring at you? Only for two weeks now. Maybe you remind me of somebody I know. Possibly your mother. You writing another letter to Slope? Byron, Aaron needs those notes this afternoon. Do you suppose you could fit them into your busy schedule? Do you like your job? It's a job. Why? I feel like you're kind of wasting away here. <laughs> really? My, what a tragic fate. Tell you, Byron, you do peculiar things when you're in love. But why you're doing this, I really don't know. Me? <laughs> I'm broke. My folks are in Germany now. My father's a naval attaché in Berlin. What's Lord got to say this time? I'm going to Warsaw.
to tell me that you've been in Siena nine years and never been to the Palio? I have never attended the race. That is incredible. It's nothing but a relic of the medieval burlesque races. Sometimes they race donkeys and buffaloes. In Rome, they race Jews. Moreover, my friend the Archbishop tells me the crowds are so unruly, you risk being jostled or even trampled. Well, then why the sudden interest? Well, because Life magazine wants me to write an article about it for a very substantial sum of money. AJ, Leslie writes that he wants me to come to Warsaw. But that's not very consistent of him, is it? Urging us to go home and inviting you to Warsaw when the war talk gets worse every day. But you're the one who said there was nothing to worry about. Natalie, is it ladylike to pursue Leslie Sloat? Is it wise tactics? That is my business. Leslie is a very cold-blooded customer. I'm going. A Jewish wife is not suitable these days to a diplomat's career. It's as simple as that. Besides, you'll be in Greece. It's the perfect time. I postponed my trip to Greece. This paleo thing gets in the way. Look, I have an idea. I have time to research the palio and attend that silly race. Why don't you do all that? And then you'd rough draft an article and we'll split the fee. How's that? How much? You'd receive one thousand dollars. Thousand dollars? Say I could buy a whacking good trousseau for that. A trousseau? Is that still in the wind? Yes. Can I use Byron for the research? I don't see why not. All right, and then I'll go to Warsaw in August after the second polio, agreed? If the war news doesn't get worse, yes. Fine. Set. What? Warsaw. Oh, well, that's postponed at least until the end of August. What are you grinning about? Huh? Who, me grinning? Shot. Guess what? Byron finally wrote us a letter. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Lots of good news, dear. Set point, Rhoda. Tough luck, General. Take a couple more. No, no. This set. Got time for another? Unhappily not. I must be going. Well played. Now you can read your letter. Aaron Gastrum? Mm. He's the fellow that wrote that book, The Jew's Jesus. Oh, yes. You said you liked it, didn't you? Yeah, I read it twice. Mm. Well, if Byron Henry's working, it's the biggest news about him since you had him. Ah, oh, there seems to be bigger news. Looks like he's interested in a girl. What kind of girl, Italian? No, a New York girl. It's that author's niece. Her name's Natalie, Natalie Jastra, right there.
this thing is kind of far along. I think maybe I'll write him. What do you think you're going to say? It doesn't make any difference to me that she's Jewish, although that might raise serious questions about the children's faith. Children? Pug, he doesn't say a word about marrying her. It's the way he writes about her. Look, if she's Aaron Jastrow's niece, she's probably top drawer and brilliant. The point is, what chance has a marriage like that got to work nowadays? At least I want Byron to think. That comes hard to Byron. Another letter from your folks in Berlin? Yeah. What's so funny? I guess you just have to know my father. Oh? Seems you got the wrong impression from my last letter. You don't say. About what? Nothing you'd be interested in. Well, it's too bad there isn't a chance. Good news. My friend, the Archbishop, has arranged some seats for us behind the judges' stand. The second palio. But I thought you weren't going to attend. Yeah, but this makes it much more attractive, so... Book my airplane tickets a week later, Greece. The August 23rd, I think. Hmm? Wonderful. That's when I'll fly to Warsaw. What follows gets into prognostication, so may be judged frivolous or journalistic. However, to this observer, all the evidence indicates that Adolf Hitler, at this time, is negotiating a military alliance with the Soviet Union. Uh, Henry, do you really intend to send this stuff to the Office of Naval Intelligence? That's the way I see it, sir. My job here is reporting on Germany's combat readiness and political trends. Henry, anti-communism is the lifeblood of Hitler's politics. The German people's fear of the Bolsheviks put him in power and keeps him there. You know, when Grubke took me to that submarine base, I saw some very interesting things. When I left there, it was quiet as a graveyard. No night shift. I don't think Hitler's people are behind him for full mobilization. And the way I see their industrial picture, they can't get into Poland without first nullifying the Soviet Union. Well, all I can say is if I send him this report, I'll be laughed out of the Foreign Service. And I don't think it'll do your career much good either. Well, I wouldn't want to look like a damn fool. Good. I'll leave the global masterminding to the men who are paid for it. Now, there's your report. Yes, sir. Unthinkable. Why? Isn't it militarily sound? Militarily, militarily, militarily. A pact with the United States would be equally sound. Ah, but Poland doesn't lie between Germany and the United States. It would be a political miracle. Well, isn't that your Führer's specialty? <laughs> Sheer fantasy, Commander. Crude melodrama. If you say so. I'm afraid you do not understand European politics. Is Germany prepared to fight an all-out war on two fronts? Number one. War is not inevitable. Number two, two fronts are also not inevitable. Well, Victor, let's hope I'm better on a horse than on the tennis court, huh?
With Case White, the invasion of Poland, only 20 days away, Mussolini sends his son-in-law, Count Galeazzo Ciano, the Italian foreign minister, to Hitler's mountain retreat. My Führer. Graf Ciano. Bei Eva Plan. Charming and urbane, with the ability to speak fluent German, Ciano has been charged with a mission of relaying to Hitler Il Duce's decision not to enter into any armed conflict over Poland, despite the vaunted Pact of Steel between their two countries. discloses the plans for Case White to Ciano. He must attack by September 1st, because the autumn rains start October 15th. He needs six weeks, two weeks to smash Poland, two to four weeks for mop up. Ciano warns Hitler that Italy is unprepared for war. He explains that the Pact of Steel was signed in anticipation of war in 1942, not 1939. He proposes another Munich-style conference. Maybe the West will give in again without a fight. A telegram from Moscow. From Moscow? Now can you tell the Gute Nachrichten bringen. Moskau hat sich bereit erklärt, einen politischen Beauftragten von mir sofort zu empfangen. Zu welchem Zweck? Volle Normalisierung unserer Beziehungen. Die Briten und die Franzosen sind doch in Moskau, um eine Allianz abzuschließen. Das ist, was Sie sich erhoffen. Wir führen schon seit Monaten geheime Verhandlungen mit der Sowjetunion. Ich habe Sie überlistet. Unthinkable. Why? Your charge is exactly right. Read mein Kampf. I did. You haven't grasped it. He says himself somewhere that a pact with Russia would be the end of Germany. I did a little ungentlemanly spying aboard Grubke's flagship. I saw some operational figures. He'd like me to think that he has 70 submarines operational. I doubt that he has 50. No? Well, so, it's just part of the general German unpreparedness. I doubt that Hitler can go to bat if there's a risk that Stalin will come in against him. Yes, sir. And we've got an alliance with Stalin practically sewed up. So, Hitler's stymied. So, no war. So, why hasn't this alliance been announced? Well, what do you think, Pamela? I think if that report will jeopardize your career and make you unhappy, then by all means, tear it up. Well, that's hardly the point, is it? As far as I'm concerned, it is. Victor, don't send that report. If you do, you'll make a complete ass of yourself. Now, Commander, I leave for triple half, ten minutes. Hold the pouch open for me, will you, and wait outside? Yes, sir.
Ships and submarines proceed to war station. Dispatch telegrams to commence army mobilization. Move army headquarters to Sassen and transfer operations. Did General Thomas present the army's warning memorandum to Keitel? Read it to him. And his response? His response? Prisoners to decadent, France to degenerate, America to uninterested, to fight for Poland. And the Soviet Union? What is his opinion of the Soviet Union? Issues the orders. Immediately.
I think that horse was drugged. Yes, sir, I think most of them are. That guy probably sold out to another parish. And Natalie, this article will write itself. Now, what these CMEs have evolved is a grotesque little parody of European nationalism. <laughs> the paleo is war. Close call there, wasn't it? These people are out of their minds. I said it was a war between spare civilians. Absolutely insane. In for a penny, in for a pound. I find all this quite exhilarating. So, let's go. Better hang on to me a little more tightly, Byron. I'm a little derelict there for a moment. There are snags in the Nazi Soviet deal. The Russians are getting tougher and are in no hurry to proceed. Valuable time passes. Telegrams fly back and forth. Ribbentrop has offered to fly to Moscow with full powers to conclude a pact. Weighing on Hitler's mind is the knowledge that the British and French military envoys are in Russia still negotiating. Finally, he comes to an unprecedented decision. He will humble himself and write a personal letter of appeal to his great enemy, out of hand. Stalin. 
Something has to be done about it before it is too late. The tension between Germany and Poland has become intolerable. A crisis may arise any day. I therefore propose that you receive my foreign minister on Tuesday, August 22nd, but at the latest, August 23rd. I should be glad to receive your early answer. Byron, have you ever been to Warsaw? No, why? Would you like to come there with me? Well, what would be the point? Thing is, Aaron's getting difficult about my trip. Am I going and make a difference? Yes. Don't you know what he calls you now? My golden lad. <laughs> Can't get over what you did at the Palio. Oh, you exaggerate that. No. You showed striking presence of mind. I was very impressed, and so was Aaron. I mean, that horse might very well have killed him. What about your friend Sloat? Don't you think he'd take a dim view of me showing up there with you? I'll handle Sloat, all right? Well, with Aaron away in Greece, I couldn't imagine a more dismal place than this. Why not, Natalie? Terrific. We'll have a wonderful time, I promise you. Byron, I cannot tell you what a load you have taken off my mind. This headstrong girl doesn't realize how wild and backward Poland is. And the political situation is deteriorating by the day. You talk as though I were some kind of idiot. You are a girl. You have quite a lot of trouble remembering that. However, Mind is much more at ease. You're a very capable young man, Byron. Let's have a bottle of champagne on it. Champagne, Maria. See the So, you and Natalie are off to Warsaw. I hope you'll manage to see my cousin Beryl. I haven't seen him since I left Poland almost 50 years ago. Beryl Yastro. Presence of mind was his strong point, too. The time pressure continues to grow. 24 hours have passed and still no reply from Moscow. Adolf Hitler is in a state of near collapse from sleeplessness and tension. Sure. The reply. I thank you for your letter. I hope the German-Soviet non-aggression pact marks a decided turn for the better in our relations. The Soviet government agrees to have von Ribbentrop's arrival in Moscow on August the 23rd. für eine wichtige Ansage bitten. Soeben wurde gemeldet, dass die Reichsführung und die sowjetische Regierung einen Nichtangriffspakt geschlossen haben. 
Der Reichsaußenminister wird am Mittwoch in Moskau die Vertragsverhandlungen abschließen. Ich danke Ihnen. You were right. They were all wrong, and you were right. Compliments on your prescience, Victor. Turn out to be right after all. The question is, what did he have to give Stalin? Natalie, even if you're right, that embassy's gonna be swamped. You probably won't even have a chance to see him. Byron, I'm on my way now, and I'm not turning back. Hey, take it. I'll go check us in. You sure you wanna go? You needn't. Honestly, I'm releasing you. Wait a minute, I don't want you to come. Don't come. Tell Aaron I said that. Oh, shut up, Natalie. Just hand over the ticket. My, my. Listen to Byron Henry being masterful. The thing is, my darling, if anything does go wrong, I don't want to feel that it was I who dragged you into this. Finish your lemonade off with your key pie. Proszę Pani, witamy w Warszawie. Proszę Pana, dzień dobry. Dzień dobry, proszę Państwa. Witamy, dzień dobry. They're slow. Yes. 
so you got my wire. Mm. You're a mad woman. Only you'd make a pleasure trip during a general mobilization. <laughs> Hello, Baron. Hi. Well, give me a passport so I can move you through fast. See these people? You know who they are? Those are called sensible people. They're getting out while the getting's good. The Jews, mostly. Listen to the radio? Do you read the newspapers? Do you pay any attention to what's going on? What kind of a stupid question is that? Of course I do. So the point is, are you glad to see me or not? Hmm? <laughs> By the way, Leslie, did you manage to locate Uncle Aaron's cousin? Oh, you're Beryl Jastro. He's out of town, it seems. Gone down to Majitse for his son's wedding. Oh, that's too bad. I wanted to meet him. Here. Leslie, on our way back to Rome, I thought Byron and I might stop off at Magizze. Absolutely not. Forget it. I will not. Aaron told me to visit the family, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. Natalie, there are half a million German soldiers in Czechoslovakia right this minute, posted at the Jablonka Pass, 40 miles from Magizze. You understand that? In the last three days, the hotels have all emptied out. And they're virtually giving these rooms away. This is what I need. All right, gentlemen, leave. See you at dinner. I'm going to have a great bath. Listen, this Majitse trip, it's, it's dangerous nonsense. I'm going to get you air tickets out of here just as quickly as I can. And if it takes the both of us to put her bodily on that plane, it has to be done. Okay? Yeah, sure. Thank you. See you at dinner. Sorry to be late. The embassy is just a madhouse. It's all those Jews they're storming the gates. We've all turned into visa officers. God knows I don't blame them. If anyone can show a relative or a friend, a letter, anything from the States, we process them. Right now, a New York telephone book in Warsaw is worth 100 zoltis. Uh, can they run? Uh, shall I just order for everybody? Aha. Um, well, so should like a Barst, Cervones, Batuchikim, these are local specialists. Uh, you like them. Um, 
veal steak. It's very good here. Interested? Taranzi do volvi so biskego, skrash, skrasho, pichama. Agla pana, to jinka špitan. Klamanje prožet, dužo vodka. Tezer, zamovime pošte. I'm not going to Rome. Natalie, wait. I'm not ready to panic yet. Hitler will do exactly what he wants to do, and that'll be that. Natalie, for all we know, Hitler has already given the order to march. Now, oh. down there in Majitz in the next two weeks, you have a 50-50 chance of being captured by German soldiers. I think those odds are a bit risky, don't you? Oh, be quiet, Slow. <laughs> I'm off to Medjitsa. I'm not missing that wedding. Want to come along? Can we just go to sleep? I never went to sleep. I've been with Leslie all night, arguing mostly. What time is it? Half past six. The plane for Krakow leaves at nine. Krakow? That's the closest airport. Yeah. I told Sloat last night that you were going to fly to Rome this afternoon. I know, I know. I'll leave him a note. Listen, if you go with me, then we don't have to go back to Warsaw. We can go straight to Rome from Krakow. Have you heard any kind of news? We listened to BBC this morning at 6. Henderson is still conferring with Hitler, and Chamberlain has gone to his country house for the weekend. Sloat himself says that the British are just crawfishing and that the worst is over. Besides, when am I ever going to have another chance to see where my parents come from and meet my family? I'm here now. How are you going to get from Krakow to Majitsi? I wired Beryl Jastrow to meet me. OK, I'll go with you. You will? Yeah. As goofy as I am, Briny. <laughs> You will have big surprise when we come to Mjajits. All family very happy American Kuzinke is coming for marriage. This is very good luck for everybody. 
You better brace yourself for a big reception. <laughs> yes. And you no worry for going to Rome. I have very good friends in Krakow, and no problem for you to fly aeroplane day after marriage. No problem. See, what did I tell you? Nothing to worry about. Ashvenshtim. Baron, that's where my father and Aaron studied the Talmud as boys, only it had a different name then under Austria. Baron, what was Ashvenshtim called before under Austria? Before it was Auschwitz. Yeah, that's it. Auschwitz? This is our village, Miedzic. from these children is your cousins. You know half, more than half of this village is Yastros. <laughs> is he serious? Yes. Yes, he is, and we're gonna meet every single one of them. Yes. the younger man, Henry Byron. There is an officer in the Fundamerikanische Flot. Unsere Bewussten Aaron Jastrow hat ihm geschickt zum Beschützen unsere Cousinke Natalie. The rabbi.
Mary, pray I go Hallo, General von Rohn am Apparat. Bitte Hauptquartier, zweiter Panzerarmee. Right this way. 
But what do we do now? We'll get ourselves back to the American Embassy in Warsaw. Brilliant. How? Uh, I buy you two tickets on train to go to Warsaw. How do you get there? Oh, my family and me, we, we go in our automobile. Don't worry. 300 miles in front of the German advance in that, huh? Well, no problem. Good car. Look at you uh, take those tickets and give them to your wife and daughter. We'll go with you and the newlyweds. No, 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 no. no. I insist. Sorry I got you into this, Briny. Forget it. It'll be interesting. Besides, it's a great wedding. <laughs> left? The Jennings have given me until tonight. Would you care to hear the bad man explain all to the Reichstag? I can get you into the press box. My last story from Berlin. Sure, I'll go. Good. Pamela will pick you up. She's pecking like mad. <laughs> Dasbury, will England fight? My God, I hope she will. If Chamberlain won't declare war, I think he'll fall. Well, see you in the Reichstag. Ryan? Sir. Call him. I saw the lines are jammed, sir. Get through. Warsaw, isn't it? Well, maybe it'll thin out as we go along. against tanks. Hey, 
think we have all in the uh, entire I think. <laughs> Pronto, Dottore Aaron Jastro. Commander Henry. I had no idea my son was not in Italy with you. No, seven days ago, he and my niece went off to Warsaw. Warsaw? Yes, she had a friend there in the embassy, a second secretary, Leslie Sloat. They expect to get married, in fact. But I've been trying and trying to get through to Warsaw. I'll get on this right away. Well, it was a harebrained trip, but when your son volunteered to go with her, and that was a great relief to me. He seems to be a very capable young man. I'll wire you as soon as I find anything out. You know, this gives me a strange and terribly sad feeling. I can't help remembering the last war. Not so long ago, Doctor. Well, I hope to meet you one day. I'd like to know Byron's father. He worships you, you know. If you hear anything, will you please let me know? I will, I will. Goodbye, Doctor. something to eat. We cannot eat this. You can. No, thanks. I'll get this tire fixed. <laughs> I'm glad you're amused. I was a close 
this one. So long as we keep out of it, who cares who wins? Extra! Read all about it! War in Europe! Hitler invades Poland! Warsaw bomb! News has gone and snatched my girl. I work for CBS, too. Look, I know it's the war. My whole show this morning is about the war. Look, Fred, I need some help down here. What do you mean you can't send me anybody? Fred, there's scripts to be... This is not a one-man operation, Fred. Mr. Cleveland? Just a minute, Fred. Yes? The personnel office sent me. You? How old are you? 20. What's your name? Madeline Henry. All right, Fred. Well, Madeline, let's get started. First, I want some more coffee and a chicken sandwich. And there's tomorrow's script that needs to be typed over. Mr. Cleveland. Yes? Well, I have to tell you that I'm very temporary. Well, I have to go back to Washington in three weeks to go to school, or my father will kill me. Three weeks? Oh. Hey. Mr. Cleveland, please let me work for you till then. I mean, your show is brilliant, and, and I'll get the coffee and the sandwich, and, I, and uh, I'll now, type the script. Uh, how much experience have you had? Well, none, but... Look, I've been trying to get into broadcasting for four months. And this is the only chance I've had at a real job. Please give me a chance. What does your father do? Is he in government? Well, he's in Berlin. He's the naval attaché there. Your father is our naval attaché in the Nazi Germany? Yeah. Madeline, would you by any chance know of an admiral by the name of uh, Preble? Stuart Preble? That's him. Uh, is he some high mucky muck? He's chief of naval operations. Big job, huh? Mr. Cleveland, you don't get any higher in the Navy. He's at the Warwick. We keep tabs on all the large hotels. Um, does he know your father? As a matter of fact, he does. My father was his aide when he was working in Washington. His aide, huh? Look, kid. Admirals and generals usually are lousy guests, but there's a war on, so they're hot. Take this to the Warwick and deliver it into Preble's hand. Don't let them push you around. You mean I got the job? Sure, sure. Just get to Preble. Use the old charm. Make him say yes. How's your charm? Not like yours. <laughs> Move your tail. Oh, uh, Mr. Cleveland, the sandwich and the coffee? Get going. That's your car fare. Oh, aye, aye, sir. Okay, beep, but okay.
The news is bad. Radio Warsaw claims they've been pushing them back with heavy losses. Rubbish! My father's been on the phone to Stockholm. The Polish Air Force doesn't exist anymore. The Germans have broken through the whole front for these tank companies of theirs. Panzers, they're called. Yeah, the Germans are very good at spreading such stuff around. sit here all day. That's your fireball style of driving. Well, where are you off to next? London. Then Washington, I should think. Don't you have a young man in London, Pamela, or several who uh, object to your jumping around so much? Not at the moment. My father says he needs me. Well, I drove as fast as I could. Oh, come on, Commander. Just in time. I'll be waiting in the same place. Right. Wir wissen, wie sehr ich mich bemüht habe, den Frieden zu erhalten. In meinen Verhandlungen mit der Staatsführung von Polen habe ich in gutem Glauben sehr bescheidene Forderungen gestellt. Die Weltöffentlichkeit soll wissen, dass ich allein ein solch großzügiges Angebot machen konnte, bei der ich die Missbildung von Millionen deutscher Menschen riskiert habe. Es wurde abgelehnt. Meine Friedensliebe und meine unendliche Langmut Soll man nicht mit Schwäche oder gar mit Feigheit verwechseln? Ich habe mich daher entschlossen, mit Polen in der gleichen Sprache zu sprechen, in der Polen uns seit Monaten konfrontiert. hat heute Nacht zum ersten Mal auf unserem eigenen Territorium auch mit bereits regulären Soldaten geschossen. Seit 5.45 Uhr wird jetzt zurückgeschossen und von nun an wird Bombe mit Bombe verhalten. I can't believe they're buying this tripe. They're eating it up. Do you realize he's been talking for almost an hour? Ich 
habe damit weder jenen Rock angezogen, der mir einst der heiligste und teuerste war. Ich werde ihn nur ausziehen nach dem Sieg. Oder ich werde dieses Ende nicht erleben. Ich möchte Ihnen jetzt noch mein Bekenntnis ins Gedächtnis rufen, das ich damals, als ich meinen Kampf um die Macht im Reich begann, ablegte. Ich werde es Ihnen hier vorlesen. Wenn unser Wille so stark ist, dass keine Not ihn mehr zu zwingen vermag, dann wird unser Wille und unser deutsche Stahl auch jede Not meistern. Deutschland, Sieg heil! Hey! Unser Führer, Adolf Hitler, Sieg heil! Hey! Sieg heil! Hey! Sieg heil! Hey! Endlich hat er den Bluff von Blatt der Franzosen und Engländer aufgedeckt. Die marschieren doch nie. Das werden wir bald wissen. Well, what did you think? He's not big enough. He's big! That's the mistake we made over here far too long. You and the French have him outnumbered and outgunned. The French? <laughs> ah, there's Pat. Henry, we're going to need help to stop this fella. You tell them that in Washington. Don't you think I will? <laughs> you tell them as well. Happy landing. Same to you, Commander. Hello. I'm Palmer Kirby from Denver. Oh, yes. If you're too busy, throw me out. I'll come back. Not at all. Sit right down. Got your file right here. Red carpet treatment, the Bureau of Ordnance says. Mm -hmm. How'd you get here? I had to dodge around through Belgium and Norway. Some planes are flying, some aren't. Well, your uh, meeting with the IG Farben fellow seems all set. Good. You're a scientist, huh? Yeah, electrical engineer, manufacturer. Anything to do with uranium? Uranium? You can tell me it's none of my business if you want. The things you want, all zero in on uranium. The uh, graphite figures, the purchase of heavy water. You know, the Germans keep talking about this ultra-powerful bomb that they're building. They're so loose-mouthed about it, I figure it's uh, nothing to it. You know, just a propaganda plan. Hmm. Yeah? Commander, the charge wanted to see the moment you got back. Can you wait? Sure. Then, around seven? In... Yes, it'll be fine. Thank you. Bug, so you went at the Reichstag this afternoon? Yes, sir. Well, how did he strike you? Reese, the man is punch drunk. That's an odd reaction. It's true he's had quite a week. Incredible stamina, though. He undoubtedly wrote every word of that harangue. Quite effective, I thought. By the way, 
You're wanted in Washington. The State Department, German desk. You're to proceed there by fastest available transportation. Isn't that unusual? Well, I gather that combat readiness report of yours on Nazi Germany had something to do with it. It didn't seem to have the effect on your career that I predicted. At any rate, the idea seems to be that you pack a toothbrush and leave. Right. What's the latest word on England and France? Well, Chamberlain is addressing Parliament tonight. My guess is that the war will be on by the time you get back. Maybe it'll be over. In Poland? Perhaps. Oh, Lord, for how long? If the Clippers keep flying, I'll be back by the 15th. Well, when do you go? I leave for Rotterdam at 8. What? Tonight? You mean we don't even get to go to the opera? Oh, damn. And what about that galoot that Buard wished on us? Not your problem. Bill Forrest has got his file, and Sally will entertain him. And what if France and England do declare war? Wouldn't that just be peachy, me stranded alone in Berlin in the middle of a world war, hey? I'll get back in any case, through Lisbon or Copenhagen. I'll get back, Rhoda. Well, at least you'll see Madeline, and... Oh, I guess Byron's safe enough in Siena if Italy does stay out of it. Byron will be all right. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry I threw my little fit, dear. You know me. Two days have passed since the German army attacked Poland. England and France have not yet moved. The British ambassador has just delivered a message to Ribbentrop's official interpreter, Paul Schmidt, at the Foreign Ministry. Schmidt is rushing the secret paper to Hitler and his advisors at the Chancellery. Oh, well, Ribbentrop. Just the essentials. This government's note of September 1st notified the German government that unless German troops were promptly withdrawn from Poland, Great Britain intended to fulfill its obligations to Poland. No reply has been received. German attacks upon Poland have intensified. Unless not later than 11 a.m. today, satisfactory assurances have reached His Majesty's government in London, a state of war will exist between the two countries as from that hour. I assume the French will hand in a similar ultimatum within the hour. If we lose this war, may God have mercy on us. In two months, Poland will be finished. Then we'll have a great peace conference with the Western powers. I shall now go to the front.
Dokąd pan jedzie? Do Warszawy. Kto jedzie z panem? Moja rodzina. Dokumenty, proszę. Żydzie, tak. czy ty nie wiesz, że tu Niemcy wkraczają? Bawisz się w hazard. Już panu powiedziałem. Co my tylko pojechać do Warszawy. Żydzie, nie okazujesz mi pełnego respektu. A jak zabiorę ci samochód, co? Wtedy zobaczymy, jak łatwo Żydom dostać się na piechotkę do Warszawy. What is this? There is bad Polak, there is good Polak. This time very bad Polak. Wszyscy won z samochodu. Powiedziałem won! He wants our automobile. Hold on here, let me talk to this guy. Careful! I'm an American naval officer. I'm returning to the embassy in Warsaw. This American girl is my fiance and these people are her family. Amerykanin? Oficer amerykański, który wraca do Warszawy do ambasady amerykańskiej. A ta dziewczyna to jego narzeczona. My jesteśmy jej krewni. Oficer amerykański nigdy by się nie ożenił z Żydówką. He says American officer never marry Jew. He does not believe you. Paszport. Pójdę z tym Amerykaninem do komendanta. Idziemy. Brady, don't go with him. I'll be okay. Right back, everybody quiet.